Today we are going to talk about some quadratic graphs. So this is lesson 10D. And the first thing we're going to do is fill out this table and we are going to graph y equals x squared. So let's see, let's just do negative 3 all the way up to positive 3. So if I substitute these numbers in for x and then I square them, I get 9, 4, 1, 0, 1, 4, 9. And if you look, there should be a pattern. Um, if you look at 0, 0, these numbers are just the same. It's like they're a reflection. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and graph. Here is the origin. So let's see, over 3, up 9. And then over two, up four. To the left one, up one. There's zero, zero. And if I know the points on the left, I can get the points on the right because they're just a reflection. So over two, up four. Over three, up nine. And then if you connect, that is the shape that we get. Now, really quick before I move on, there is a reminder up here. When you're putting negative numbers in a calculator, you have to make sure you put a negative, or I'm sorry, parentheses around it. Because if you put negative 3 squared in your calculator versus the opposite of 3 squared, you're going to get two different answers. This is going to give you 9, and this is going to give you negative 9. So you have to make sure you put parentheses around negative numbers because it will give you the right answer that way. This is not which how you want to do it there. Okay, anyway, the name of this graph is called a parabola because it's shaped like a bowl. The bend of the graph, so like this little part right here where it comes to like a point, that is called the vertex. And yes, this graph is a function because it passes the vertical line test. If I were to draw vertical lines throughout my graph, it's going to cross it just once. Okay, let's try this next graph here. Now this time, um, I'm going to go ahead and use the same x values that I did above. I'm going to start with negative 3 and I'm going to go all the way up to positive 3. So this time I'm going to square the number and then add 2. Well these are all the numbers that I get when I square them and then I'm just going to add 2 to it. So let me write in the numbers above. This is what I get when I square them. And then if I add 2, I'm going to add 2 to all these squares. I'm going to get 11, and this is also 11, this is 6, this is 6, this is 3, this is 3, and this is 2. So let's plot these points and then we're going to see what happened to this graph. So again, here is the origin, <laughs> so I'm going to get to the left 3, up 11, negative 2 up 6, negative 1 up 3, and then 0, 2. And then it just kind of repeats backwards, so I'm going to reflect this over here. So over 1 up 3, over 2 up 6, and then over 3 up 11. So my question is, how does this graph compare to this one? Looks like it just shifted up two. Now we're not gonna graph parabolas this specific way. We're always gonna use this kind of table. 
after we move either left, right, up, or down, which we've done many times when we go and graph. So let's go to the next page. Alrighty, so in general, we're going to talk about when a number is inside parentheses versus when it's on the outside of parentheses. All right, so let's say um, we have something like this. or maybe something like this. So we're gonna talk about, I guess in this case, K being on the outside. I don't have parentheses, it's on the outside, therefore. So if the number by itself or on the outside is being added, it's gonna move the graph up. If the number on the outside is being subtracted, it's going to move the graph down. Okay, now let's talk about when the number is on the inside of the grouping symbol. So something like this. Here are two different types of examples. So I've got x minus h on the inside and then x plus h on the inside. So if you remember from when we graphed many times before, um, if I have a number being subtracted on the inside of parentheses, then I'm actually going to the right. I do the opposite. And then if it's x plus h, so if the number is being added, again, I do the opposite. So I'm going to go to the left. Oh, and then up here, that's the same thing as up here. We're still talking about what happens if the number is on the inside or the outside. <laughs> Okay, now let's talk about when we have a negative. If there is a negative, then the graph is just going to reflect. So if the parabola opens up, then the negative makes it open down. So if there's a negative, it's going to reflect it across the x-axis. So again, if the parabola is opens up usually, it's going to open down. All right, let's go ahead and graph. And I am going to refer back to that first table that was on the first page. Let me write it down. And I'm not going to use all the numbers in the x column. I'm just going to use maybe negative, starting with negative 2, and go all the way up to positive 2. And if I look back here, where'd it go? Here we go. If I look back here at this table, this is the table we're going to use throughout graphing parabolas. So I'm going to use this table. So I'm just going to write this table down exactly how I see it, I just, instead of looking back and forth there. So x negative 2 squared is 4, negative 1 squared is 1, 0 squared is 1, 1 squared is 1, and 2 squared is 4. So I'm going to use this table when I graph parabolas. Well, first I have to move my graph. So, so if I have a number inside, I'm going to do the opposite. So I'm going to go to the right one. This is by itself, so I go down three. You want to do that first. So to the right one, down three. That is my new vertex. So from there, I'm going to plot these points. However, I do have a negative. That's going to change all these to their opposite sign. So all those y values are going to change to their opposite. So these are still the x's, but these are going to be the y's because that negative made them change. So I'm going to go negative 2 down 4. 
negative 1 down 1, 0, 0, this is right there we moved our origin, over 1 down 1, and then over to the right 2 down 4. So it's going to look something like that for number 3. Okay, number four. So again, I do the opposite if it's on the inside. So left one, down five. Okay, there is my new origin. I don't have a negative in front, so I'm gonna plot these points exactly how you see them from here. Okay, and then we connect. And again, it should be a parabola. All right, moving on. So this one means I'm gonna go to the right two, up one. There's my new origin. I don't have a negative in front, so I'm gonna plot these points exactly how we see them. and then we connect. Okay, number six, I don't have a number inside parentheses this time, so I'm not gonna go left or right, but this plus four does mean I'm gonna go up four. So there is the new origin, and I do have a negative. So that just means these x value, or these y values actually, are gonna change to their opposite sign. I'm just going to make them all negative. The x's stay the same, but the y's change to their opposite. So from here, I'm going to plot these x's and these y's. So to the left 2, down 4. To the left 1, down 1. And then there's 0, 0. To the right 1, down 1. To the right 2, down 4. And it's going to be upside down because of the negative out in front. All right, moving on. I think now we're gonna do the opposite. I'm gonna give you a graph and you're gonna tell me the equation. All right, so first I'm gonna point out where the origin is on all these. All right, then I gotta find their vertex. So here is the new vertex for the new origin, it's the vertex of the parabola. Okay, so I have to figure out what happened from the old origin to the new origin. So on this one, it looks like I just went up three. That's all that happened there. And it's also upside down, which means I'm gonna have a negative in my answer. So my answer is y equals, uh, I have to put a negative out in front, of my x squared, and then I went up three, so plus three. So that is my answer to that one. All right, this one, it looks like I started here and then I ended up here, so let's see. One, two, three, four, five. I went to the right five, and then I went up two. It's a regular parabola, so I don't have any negatives this time. So y equals, and then since I went to the right five, I have to do the opposite, so minus five, squared plus two. Don't forget that squared, because that means it's a parabola. If you don't put the square, then you're telling me it's a line. All right, number nine. So I'm starting here, and I'm going to there. So let's see, one, two. So I went to the left, two. And then one, two, three, four, up four. Left four, up, wait, left two, up four, my bad. It's also upside down, so I'm gonna have a negative in my answer. So I'm gonna have y equals, I have to put a negative because it is upside down. Since I went to the left two, it's gonna be x plus two squared because it's a parabola, and then up four. So that is my answer to number nine. All right, and then we have number 10. So I went from here to here. So let's see, one, two. 
So to the right, two. Two, three, four, down, four. It is not upside down, so I don't have to worry about any negatives. So y equals, since I went to the right, it's gonna be x minus two squared for a parabola, and then minus four. Alrighty. <clears throat> All right, write an equation for a function in the form that intersects the graph one time. Okay, and it does not intersect the graph at the right. Okay, so it looks like I need two different, there's two different things going on here. Write an equation for this that intersects the graph one time. Okay, so first of all, I have to figure out an equation that would intersect this graph once. It's probably, I don't know, the most obvious one would be maybe it having the same vertex and then just being upside down maybe. So I'll call this part A, because there's actually two things going on. So the only thing that happened was both of these graphs, to get there, you went to the left three. And then, of course, this one's upside down, so I have to put a negative. So it looks like I want to do f of x instead of y equals this time. And then, since I went to the left, it's going to be plus. And then that's the only thing I have to do for that one. All right, then, this is part B, I guess we'll say. Do the same for a graph that does not intersect the graph at the right. So now I have to do one where it doesn't intersect it at all. <clears throat> so, I don't know, maybe do one over here. And you could have many different answers really for this one. But this one right here is definitely not gonna intersect the original one. So let's see what happened. I went to the right, one, two, three, four, five, six. And then I went down, down four. And then it is upside down. Okay, so I'm gonna use f of x again. It is upside down, so a negative. I went to the right 6, so x minus 6 squared because it's a parabola, and then minus 4. And that is an error question. Some of these error questions you have to really kind of analyze what's going on here. All right, that brings us to, I believe, the last page. All right, let's see. The function f of x, which is right here. undergoes a single transformation to create g of x. g of x is right here. They're both shown below. Create g of x in terms of f of x. Okay, so I need to write an equation for g of x based upon f of x. So the only difference it looks like is that this one just flipped. So I am writing an equation of g of x based upon f of x. So the only difference is that again, it's upside down. So it's, the, it's still gonna be f of x because I wanna put it in terms of f of x, but f of x just flipped upside down. It reflected across the x-axis. So that is my answer to that one. And I believe that is all. Yep, that is all for 10D.